All right, well, we're going to make a next video. This one's going to be on assembling a piston uh, to the rod and adding the rings. And a couple things I want to cover before we get started. Uh, the pistons came in a set, a set of six pistons, uh, aluminum construction, and we went ahead and weighed them. They're all within plus or minus one gram. Um, there, they should come as a match set. They should all be weighed weighed through the correctly. This is part of your balance that we talked about with the rods, um, and these seem to be just fine. Like I said, plus or minus a gram. They should come that way, but it never hurts to check. And then we we'll talk a little bit about the rods. Now, I told you before, whenever we were balancing the rods, that I had purchased two rods, supposedly, you know, original equipment replacement. Um, we did have to take. You know a fair amount of material off of the ends to balance them they were oh you know, 10 grams heavier than stock uh, what at least what we had uh, 612 is supposed to be the specification on these but uh, anyway so uh, I had checked them checked their diameters uh, on both the small and the large end previously and uh, turns out that I was I guess a bit of a hurry I didn't get real detailed. Uh, the small end is actually it was about three thousandths uh, undersized. I guess better undersized than oversized, but um, they are floating wrist pin. They're not press pins, so uh, they need to be able to float. Uh, so what we ended up doing was taking a brake hone. Uh, we used a brake hone to um, increase the diameter by a couple of few thousandths until the wrist pin uh, would, uh, with some modest friction, uh, slide through uh, there. We also went ahead and used some polishing rouge and a polishing disc on the inside. Went ahead and polished that surface just to make sure it was nice and smooth and didn't give us any excess friction against the wrist pin. So, you know, because the problem averted, but, uh, just you know kind of surprising these supposedly are for this motor and they should have been right from the get-go but they're right now and uh, no worries about them uh, didn't take off enough to significantly change the weight uh, to even measurably change the weight on our scale so uh, we're fine on that still so anyway uh, as we get started remember these are oil slinger rods which means they have this little oil slinger, slinger slot right here um, and that's the front of the rod that faces the front of the motor additionally the piston has got uh, F's right here that indicate the front of the piston also on top there is a dot dots right there and that indicates the front of the piston um, so we want to be sure that we get the orientation correct as we go together first step install a wrist pin clip um, the wrist pin clips, there are grooves for the wrist pin clip. You want to be sure you hit that groove. Um, and when you're done, you want to be sure that you're seated all the way around in that groove. Otherwise, uh, you could fling a wrist pin loose in the, in the motor. And you don't want to do that. This is never any fun when you're trying to do it on camera. So, exceed it. in the groove if you don't get to see all this I'll apologize now because it's kind of hard to do and worry with the position of the camera okay we got it started in there now we just need to see it in the groove and we'll double triple check it is seated in the groove uh, if you can see it, let's see. It's seated down there in the groove. So, next thing to do is we're going to lubricate the wrist pin. Uh, this is uh, an engine assembly lube. Um, not selling a brand, just selling a product. You need engine assembly lube on all rotating parts when you are rebuilding a motor and an engine. Um, basically, until you get good oil 
circulation throughout the motor, good oil pressure on the oil pump. You want to have plenty of lubrication on all moving parts. So I'm going to begin by inserting uh, the wrist pin in the side without the wrist pin clip. And then as it gets going, again, this is the forward portion of the piston on this side. And here is the forward portion of the uh, rod. We're going to make sure front's facing front. And you just slip the wrist pin clip in. And it's literally just as easy as that. Uh, we're going to get rid of this excess assembly lube, which always builds up on the back side when you push that pin in. And then we're going to take our final wrist pin clip and we're going to install it here. Now this is, if one of them is going to not be in the groove, uh, it's likely this side. Only because, you know, you've got things obstructing your view. And the wrist pin clips, excuse me, the wrist pins not in all the way. It'll uh, make it more difficult to land in that slot. Okay, so we're in. And we got really lucky. It fell right in the groove. So, it thinned out. I'm using needle nose here. Thinned out. Just push with your needle nose to make sure that that clip is fully embedded in the groove uh, that's associated with it. So, it's together. Now we just need to install rings. Uh, on the rings you've got the oil ring separator, you've got the oil rings themselves, and then you've got the number one and number two compression rings. Now these rings also have a position, a position specific um, orientation. The, each one of the rings has got the ring gap, which we looked at earlier, and that ring gap needs to point in a certain direction. Uh, in my case, because I have the factory manual, I have the factory orientation chart. Just printed that off uh, uh, from the manual, using that as my point of reference. Um, I'll show you as I go what's recommended by the manual. Um, again, we're going to use our forward. Excuse me. We're going to use our forward mark to help understand where we are. Um, the oil ring separator. Um, basically the guidance is it shouldn't be in line with the wrist pin this way, nor should it be in line with the piston this way. It should be 45 degrees out. So we're putting it up in this quadrant. And I'll show you why. Because our wiper rings, our oil rings, are going to be in these two quadrants. So that we put it up in this quadrant out of the way. So the first one will be in this quadrant. And so we'll affix underneath on the bottom of the oil ring separator and we'll work it around. Again, not hard to do unless you're on camera and then it's a real chore. So we're going to work our way around. Apologize if you're not seeing it all. So that one is now right here. The next one will be on this quadrant. So I'll we'll turn it a little bit. The uh, top and bottom oil compression ring, oh, excuse me, the oil wiper rings are identical and they do not necessarily have any top or bottom to them. They can go in. There's no upside down, in other words. So now this one's in this configuration. Now the next two are the compression rings. The compression rings do not have a top and bottom mark, but they do have some faint lettering, basically part number type identification. And I like to keep that up, uh, facing upward. Uh, if it doesn't tell you top or bottom, just uh, you know, come with a consistent approach. I'm bringing them up on top, because generally if there's a mark, the mark goes on top. So we're gonna go with that. So this one's gonna be over in this quadrant. 
again we'll start it here now look you can go get wrist um, ring pliers by the way uh, if you want to get a set of ring pliers you feel free um, I have a set and more often than not I do not use them unless they're particularly stiff rings the reason is I have been known to throw a ring across the shop and uh, well sometimes they're hard to find they're relatively brittle you can break them so I just try to manipulate them as best I can if they're not too stiff so this one's in this quadrant the second one was in this quadrant the two oil rings are here and here so and then the separator gap I put it put it up here so if it's like a clock then you could say that the oil ring separator is at uh, you know one 130 um, the oil rings are at whatever this would be 430 and 730 however it works and then the other two for the uh, compression rings are up here so that's that um, hopefully you got to see some of it anyway uh, the rings are on pistons ready I've got a two liter coke uh, carrier uh, that I'm putting the pistons into uh, with some protection around them and they'll be ready for the install when the installs ready for them so I hope that's useful talk to you later